Hey there everybody, we've got the iPad here again and right now we're going to have a look at what typing is like on the iPad. Um, I've said it before and I will say it again, I was really looking forward to the announcement of the iPad due to the fact that I thought Apple was going to be bringing a really innovative way to type or input text on a larger uh, tablet like this. As they had done with the iPhone, they really made the um, non-physical keyboard um, into something that was really viable and worked really well. So I expected them to, uh, you know, make sure that they had a great um, typing experience for the iPad. And I really wasn't expecting the iPad to feature just a giant um, on-screen keyboard, but alas, that's actually what they gave us. So here we've got the big OSK. Um, it's got predictive, um, well, not necessarily predictive, but it it fixes and adjusts um, your typing based on where you're typing and what you're likely to type. Uh, it's probably the best um, OSK implementation on a large format uh, like this so far, but like I said, just because it is the best out there doesn't mean it's it's a good experience. Um, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but it's not going to replace your notebook. Uh, you're not going to want to type lengthy papers on this, and I, I guess it's good for the short URL entry. But um, as far as... I, basically, I think what I'll say is, at this point, it's easier to type on the iPhone with, as a thumbboard rather than on this uh, flat OSK. So let's just take a look at what it's really like. Uh, keep in mind, of course, I've been playing with this for just a day or two now, and, of course, the iPhone I've been using for quite a long time. So there's a full sentence. Uh, you can crank it out pretty quick, but the keyboard doesn't seem to have the same feedback as the iPhone keyboard. And I think that's because um, on the iPhone keyboard, normally when you tap a key, it pops up above it so that you can see exactly what you're typing. The iPad doesn't do that, and I think it's a little bit worse off for it. Apple probably figured that because it's larger, you can see more easily what you're hitting, but I, I like that feature quite a bit, and it's the iPad is lacking it. And there are a few shortcuts um, that you can do with the keyboard. Double tapping, for instance, at the end of a sentence will place a period and a space to start your next sentence. Um, the shift keys are sticky keys, so you don't have to hold it. If you want to make a capital D, you can just tap it. It'll be on until you press D, and the letter D will uh, come out as a capital letter, and then that will be turned off. If you want to turn on a caps lock, you can double tap, um, but you actually need to enable the ability to turn on caps lock, lock separately in the settings menu of the iPad. So this is the landscape orientation keyboard, and there's also the portrait keyboard, which is quite a bit harder to type on, just due to the fact that it's smaller. So there we go. Two more sentences. Um, I mean, you can you can get those letters down pretty quick, and the uh, automatic fixing of words is is really quite helpful. And what actually makes this keyboard viable versus uh, similar implementations on other devices. Also, of course, the fact that it's very responsive because of the capacitive screen. Um, I, I'm really surprised Apple didn't look into implementing a sort of split keyboard here. Uh, we've seen those attempted to be used in the past. If you've heard of dial keys, um, that was something that 
uh, people tried to use on UMPCs, but we didn't have capacitive uh, screens on UMPCs back sort of in the dial key era. So we never got to see what that could be really be like if it was responsive because we were using resistive uh, touch screens and there's just a whole wealth of problems that comes along with that. Now that we've got a resistive screen, I mean, I could really see something like dial keys working here where you have half the keyboard basically over here where this thumb cover is and half over here. Instead of trying to, I mean, you get this, you start to get this awkward hold where you're holding where your fingers connect your palm to try to reach the center keys. That sort of turns into a big, big pain. So, I mean, sitting, having the iPad sitting down while you're trying to type, or if it's sitting on a surface itself or in your lap is not so bad. But if you're trying to hold this thing, if you're trying to be on the go while you're typing, uh, you, you kind of have to stretch to reach the center keys and it, it slows the process down. Not to mention it's just really not that comfortable holding it like this and trying to type. Uh, even worse is if you're trying to type while holding a device using this uh, landscape keyboard. <laughs> it's the keys are huge. You got to stretch quite a bit uh, to reach those center keys. So as you can see, I mean, you can be accurate with this keyboard because it's responsive, because it's well designed, but trying to hold it and do it on the go, really, really not the best experience. I, I like it. I like typing on the iPhone a lot better um, because it's much more comfortably held in the hands. So that's typing on the iPad. This is how the keyboard works um, all the way across the interface. It's the same in every application, although they do have uh, some custom keyboards for example, in um, the Pages application, they have you know custom uh, numeric boards for easier data entry, stuff like that. But for the most part, part this is the system-wide on-screen keyboard. And it may be the, the best we've seen yet, but I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say that this is the, the end of the line. There's room for improvement for inputting text on a, a device that doesn't have a physical keyboard.